So, unfortunately, living in Salty Lake City, floorboard was rotted out through here. So, I had to make a new floor pan. Wherever you see these 5 16 screws, what you do is you pop one out, put a weld, pop one out, put a weld, make your spot welds. But, uh, anyways, all these lines is where the, the frame is, the, the trusses underneath that hold it good and solid. As you can see, this is kind of not the greatest but I made this stamp here put that in uh, you just stamp both these this one's kind of fine tuning this one's to make sure it was flat but I just stuck it on my anvil and and uh, well, I'll put all these in like that just tap 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 but anyways we've got the floorboard in other than just popping one screw out at a time putting a weld in and then uh, we'll caulk all the way around this just like the factory does. I use my homemade bender to put this crease in right here and this crease in right here to kind of match uh, with what they already had. Pop screw out well, pop screw out well, so on and so forth. Caulk all this edge, caulk all this edge top and bottom all the way around. And then this sucker is going to get the coat of paint to protect it. As long as it lasts me another 25 years at the Lord Terry's, that's all I care. But uh, anyways, had to, just got a little tiny bit over there to replace, not near the extents that it was on the driver's side. But that baby's good and solid now. Okay guys, got to replace floorboard here like I did on the driver's side but I'm going to show you how I get all my measurements you take a straight edge I got a a, a yardstick that's a stainless rule I put the one inch at the top so I can use my marks here but you could use any kind of a good straight edge I got it lined up four inches from the door edge uh, a seal edge here four inches. Uh, now I can pull measurements off right here. I need three inches there. Down here at ten inches I need four inches. And over here I need about eighteen and three quarters. And at the seven inch mark I need seventeen inches. Now I come out here to my uh, piece of metal. I'll show you. Uh, I'll pull the measurements on there. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. Three, again, I got three at the top, four at the bottom at ten. So we'll go out here and show you on my piece of metal. I just brought it in here. I have an old dryer front or top or something. It's the same gauge as the floor. But you notice I got five inches. I want at least an inch. A play so I can bend up tabs for welding and stuff. So we got our three inches top here. Come down ten. Go four. And that's our line right there. I just use my tape rule here. The straight edge. Oops, my fingers. But uh, come down to the four here, and that gives me about an inch of bending room to bend that up uh, to have something to weld with. Then I had my 17 over here, top, gives me another inch up there, and uh, I need to pull some more measurements. But uh, I'll show it to you when, when I get it all cut out. That's why, I don't know if you remember had a line a three inch line versus a four on the other side but uh, you pull everything off of that line both directions and then it'll it should fit perfect when you cut it all out sometimes you need a rounded edge I just have a one inch pipe I clamp my piece of metal down in with the bender first just took some C clamp vice grips clamp the pipe down take this Wonder bar, slip it into there and bend it up a little bit and take the hammer and finish it off. Make it round. I'll show it to you when I get it all done. 
more of a bull nose round edge uh, to contour what I'm trying to trying to mimic for my floorboard. I'm getting ready to pull one screw out, spot weld it. You don't do it in a row like this. You could warp it so you do like one here and one clear over here and one clear over here and here, uh, here, there, all over and just keep randomly pick a spot. Uh, that way it stays good and flat and doesn't warp everything. But uh, getting ready to, uh, what I'll do is I'll weld the, the trusses first. Uh, any place that support trusses underneath, uh, we'll do them first before we do the outside perimeter. Well, got it all spot welded in. Now I'm just going to caulk around all the edges. Got it all welded to the trusses and everything. Maybe solid. So, caulk around it all the way around. Everything. All the seams. All the seams. Factory caulk it like this too, but I'm, yeah, I'm going to caulk it all along this edge, all up this edge. Every edge is getting caulked, top side and bottom side both. Going to sandblast the bottom side a little bit first before I caulk and paint it, but I'm getting ready to caulk and paint this up here now. Well, we got her all caulked up with the old Furtick filler. At least that's what my dad used to call it. I don't know why I teased my uncles. Uh, they must have had some pretty shady finished carpenters. I don't know, but this doesn't have to be pretty. This isn't the trim in your house. It's just to help seal it up. Uh, tomorrow's the Lord's Day, and I got to go preach for him. Uh, so give this thing a day of rest and let it uh, get good and hard. And then Monday I'll come in and wipe it down with some denatured alcohol and blast it with some rust oleum inside be able to go back to doing what I intended to do in the first place where I got sidetracked with the rusty holes and uh, start blasting the frame on this thing and sandblasting uh, the rust off of it thanks to good old Salty Lake City Utah but anyways uh, gonna be back on schedule have to still caulk and, and do the same down here uh, where I uh, had to put the patch panel in but uh, anyways you can see how got a new floorboard now at least hope it'll last me for a good 25 years and then let the children fight over it and let them deal with it <laughs> 